I chose pink. It's a nice, easy color. Dressing royalty, rock stars, and an adoring following of fashionistas, English textile designer Zandra Rhodes has been trailblazing the world of fashion for half a century. Love textiles. I think textiles are some of the most amazing things because you can start off with fabric and you can do things on it. So you're wearing living paintings, living works of art. At age 80, she's not slowing down. Busy with new projects, new designs, and a retrospective exhibition at her fashion and textile museum in London that tells the story of her life. Sandra Rose, 50 years of fabulous. I did his original outfit that you always see in all the catalogs, Freddie Mercury. I always remember my Freddie Mercury because he came to my funny little studio and put on a bridal top and moved around the room in it. And that was what I made for him. How busy is the princess of punk couture these days? Fantastic. Sandra's phone wouldn't stop ringing when she spoke to me from her home in London. Hi, I'm doing an interview. Can you ring, ring me in an hour? Okay. <laughs> you are a busy lady. So, so tell us about your uh, textile institute. I know that you're a year about a year ago you opened uh, the exhibit, uh, Fifty Years of Fabulous. Tell I us. I know. That. I mean, so that was then due to go then to be opened in Scotland uh, last month, but that's been now postponed until January. Um, 21, 21 now, I think. Okay. So you know, of, your, of, your 50, of, of your 50 years of, of fabulous, uh, it, it profiles the different decades of, of fashion and creation. What particularly, uh, what decade is your favorite when it comes to fashion? Oh my God. That's always such, that's always so difficult because, you know, you might get something out and you're suddenly... Or, for example, I might see Anna Sui in one of my pleated jackets and suddenly think, oh, that was wonderful. Then, you know, you, you look at another piece of something else and it's quite wonderful seeing the pieces of, appear again. And so it's quite nice thinking, oh, I love that one. And then something else changes and you love something else. So it's been quite good like that. I would guess that the, the 80s w was a decade that you loved just because of the boldness. And w w do you have a favorite decade? Gosh, I think probably the 70s would be really because the 70s, I had all my very fantasy ball gowns and all those things. Things like you'd see Evangeline Bruce appearing in Paris, looking amazing, or Irene Worth in Tiny Alice in the yellow coat with all the beads on it. But then it then culminated probably halfway through with the punk and the beaded holes and safety pins. So <laughs> there's so many different periods. You know, they say fashion is a reflection of the times. How do you see fashion evolving post pandemic? Oh my God. I keep hoping it will make a, it will come out like a wonderful flower. But how do we really know? Because we don't even know where production's coming from, what's happening. You know what I mean? It's, it, it, it could be the birth of something really amazing. I think it's going to be the birth of us being more careful about our spend. You know what I mean? I think we'll be able to make statements, but they're not always expensive spending statements. Yes, I think that uh, a lot of us are, are, are getting along with a lot less now, and we realize we don't need all the excess. Exactly, exactly. Let's talk about your signature pink bob, which uh, your trademark um, <laughs> is bold, eclectic. How did that come to be? And how long have you been sporting that hairdo, Zandra? Oh um, 
I'd experimented with Leonard and Daniel, his colorist, from about 71. And I did different things like bits, because I'm a textile designer, I had, I did bits of green streak and they all went like old straw and bits and pieces. And then I went to China in, in 79, came back and did a collection. When I went to China, all they were doing was wearing army uniforms and uh, Navy pad suits. But I came back and I went, oh, red China and dyed my hair pink. And it was so easy to keep my hair pink that that's how it stayed since 1980, can you believe? Wow. Well, that is your signature look for sure. Uh, you're, it, it, you've always been bold and different before it was even fashionable. What, what inspired you to be so unique? I suppose I've always used myself as the person to experiment on, you know, because as a designer, I really feel that if you say to someone, I believe in this dress, if I'm not wearing the dress, how do, who's going to believe in it? Do you see what I mean? So it's got to be that if I'm, if I'm selling something, then I'm selling that I believe in it first of all. So if I'm selling that I like colored hair, then I like colored hair. I'm not saying to someone, oh, you should wear it. Right, right. Well, I am honored to be able to say that I have been lucky oh, enough to wear one of your designs. And I, and I got from the archives some, some photos from a charitable event at the Westgate Hotel almost 20 years ago. Oh, there you are God. in the middle with a bunch of anchor women who were models on that day. Oh, how you. wonderful. Oh, what and wonderful memories. It was a great memory, Zandra. And you are so instrumental in incorporating charity when it comes to um, your designs and just sharing uh, your talent. And I know you've raised millions of dollars here in San Diego for uh, heart health and a, and a bunch well, of other charities. Well, we did a lot for the hospital there, you know? I, what, what, what makes philanthropy so important for you? Why are you so engaged? Well, I became involved in the hospital stuff because of my partner, Salah Hassanin, who when I first met him was the president of Warner Brothers, but then after that he retired and did various things like the sound with Todd A.O. And then he really believed in, in doctors and hospitals and he got me involved in doing paperweights and uh, helping with the shows and all sorts of things. So I had a wonderful life there in San Diego, really working with the charities that he believed in. Yes, and I'm so sorry. I know you lost him last year, and you'd been together for such a long time. And we were together and, about 25 years. Yes, that is such a quite a while. <laughs> yes, yes. You've had so many interesting relationships, and uh, you received so many amazing honors. Uh, in 2014, uh, you were named a Dame of the British Empire by Queen Elizabeth, which is essentially the female equivalent of knighthood for your contributions to the fashion industry and your philanthropy. Uh, what was that experience like? Did you actually get to lunch with the Queen? Oh, you don't get to lunch. You, you, they do 500 people at, the at a time. Or is it three? 300. Uh -huh. And then you're allowed three guests so by the time you've got 300 and you add night they've got a thousand odd in in the big ballroom in uh in buckingham palace and um and then they um they they that you you get an amazing man with all these medals comes in and he shows you how to he shows the knights how to bow and he says this is what it's going to be like and then you have to go forward and then you have to curtsy and they say, oh, she's going to ask you two questions. And when she asks you the second question, that is your signal to retreat. <laughs> <laughs> what did she ask you? I can't remember anymore. <laughs> you know, one is so, in a way, you're really quite dumbstruck by the whole affair. Do you know what I mean? That oh, you... I, can't, I can't imagine. No, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have um, 
a strong relationship with royalty over the years. Um, you dressed Princess Diana, and I read in Vogue that you and Diana conspired to kind of up her sexiness. How did you do that? Oh, I, I don't know where you read that because I didn't really know her that well. I mean, she'd come into my shop and she'd try the dress on and then I'd go to the palace and I'd enter the, and see her and I'd curtsy and then I'd fit her in the dress and she'd say, oh, you must make sure that... I did one, which is a wonderful white rat dress. And she said, you mustn't... You've got to make the rat really deep because you can be sure that as I get out of the car there'd be a photographer laying on the ground waiting to get the wrong photograph, yeah, you know? Of so, yeah, of course. I mean, it must, be, it must be terribly difficult life in that sense. Yeah, well, it certainly didn't end well for, for Diana. That is true. Um, you also, uh, Queen's Freddie Mercury, you... Uh, you I, yes. I made the outfit that you always remember him in, you know, where he had those wonderful... It was all pleated and and everything, but I did that in about 1974, five, long before they were really famous, it, definitely not famous for the other things. Right, right. Is there somebody that you wish that you could dress today? Gosh. A celebrity or a politician? I'd like to, I'd like to dress Kate. I think I could do a good job on Kate. Yeah. You know, I think it would be fun to do something for her. Yes. Um, you always have to remember, you then get picked on, you know, some will say, oh, what well, should they be at that? But I, I think that'd be very nice to dress Kate. Right. Um, I wanted to, when, um, when, who was it, that fabulous film star that did the Mexican film? Oh, um, oh, I'm not oh, sure who um, you're talking about. She, she. Um, oh, I, I'd have loved to have dressed her for that. I could have done something amazing, and but I didn't. Um, I'm trying to think of her name. Who who played um, that marvelous me woman Mexican painter? Oh oh oh, uh, Frida. Frida no. Kahlo. I'd love to have done. Oh, the, so the, the actress who played her was um, Salma Hayek. Right. I'd love to have dressed Salma Hayek. I think it would have been great fun. And you know what is so wonderful about your career, Zandra, is you've been able to weave your love of textiles and fashion and theater. Uh, I know that you were instrumental in many productions at the well, Old Globe Theater. But I mean, it was really San Diego that gave me my opportunity to work in opera. They asked me to do first the costumes for the Magic Flute, right. then sets and costumes for the Pearl Fishers. And after that, I did Aida. So it would never have happened if I hadn't been in San Diego. <laughs> Are you coming back to California anytime soon? Well, I don't intend to forget California. I mean, there's been, it's been so busy here that I haven't had time to even think about it, but I'm sure I will be. <laughs> you know, if you were not a designer, what would you be, do you think? That one's difficult because I don't know, it's rather, you know, I mean, I find that I'm on, I'm on what you call the Zandra Rhodes treadmill of what I do and that's what I do and there's nothing else. That's it. If you well, see you do talking. a lot. And as I was saying before, you have just a, a, a wonderful ability to weave all of your different interests into your art. And that's really what it's about, isn't it? Creating, that's how you get your inspiration? It is, and the inspiration comes from all sorts of different things, you know, and I mean, I, I, I found my time in San Diego inspirational, and I was due to come and start packing up my belongings to work out what had to come back to here, and then suddenly, whoop, the cloud comes down, and, and then they say, you can't travel there. You know, so I, I mean, we're waiting to see what happens. Right. You know, uh, I guess I'm interested in what advice you have for, for other designers, for entrepreneurs, for other women working hard to, to accomplish their dreams. 
I imagine during this 50 years of fabulous for you, there were some years that weren't so fabulous and there was some struggle that you overcame. What was that and how did you I overcome? I think that, I think we wouldn't even be what we are if we didn't come up against those struggles, which in the end, um, really form us that we don't have a choice that, that, you know, it's, it's, there, there are bound to be struggles and you've just got to hope that you live through it. You hope that you've got enough friends that are prepared to listen when it's awful and you can say, Oh my God, this is terrible. And you sort of live through it. And, uh, I mean, I, I think I'm very lucky in that I'm driven by my work, you know, and, uh, at the moment with in, in San Diego, my poor assistant there is having to work out what, what stays, what we can donate to various colleges in San Diego, you know, because my life is really ending up here because without Sala, it, it ends up here. On the other hand, San Diego is part of my life and it would be nice to make sure that I leave a trail that I'm proud of there, you know. And your trail, of course, you're famous for your bold, edgy, brilliant designs. But in the end, what would you like your ultimate legacy to be? What would you like people to remember you by? Oh, my God. Not that you're going anywhere anytime soon. But well, it would be nice if they put on their favorite Zander Rhodes frock and say, this is something I love being in. I, it, I used it for going to my son's wedding or my son's bar mitzvah or, you know, it, it has wonderful memories that I want to keep. Well, you have created so many wonderful memories for so many. Before I let you go, Share with us the one accessory that you must have that you can't do without. Oh my gosh. One accessory. I mean, of course, I always wear my own clothes. But I suppose then it would be probably a lovely Andrew Logan brooch or something. You oh, know that's what I mean? beautiful. Oh, yes. I, I mean, I've always... Pull that up a little bit higher. I can't see. Oh, pretty. So I've always used those in all of my shows, and there's quite a few of them here in, there in San Diego. And then Sala was, the, um, was on the board of the Ateneum. So I donated a wonderful pyramid, mirrored pyramid, with him as a sphinx to go into the Ateneum. And I hope lots of people will be thinking of wearing my things with jewelry and wait for me to come back. <laughs> yes, we will be waiting for you to come back. And Zandra, it's just so uplifting to speak with you. And you just put out such a happy, positive vibe. And I'm glad that you're creating and you're still inspiring us. And I wish you all the best. And next time you're in San Diego, I certainly hope I get to see you in person again. You Definitely. are a joy. Oh. Thank Definitely. You. I mean, San Diego has a big place in my heart that won't go away and was an inspiration for a lot of things. So I hope that I'll turn it into all sorts of wonderful memories as well that will be here in London. So San Diego, I've got to come to here in London too. Next time I'm in London, I will visit your textile museum and best of luck with the uh, fabulous uh, fashion, uh, 50 Years of Fabulous, that is going to be resurrecting again soon. Thank you. Wonderful talking to you. Thank you, darling. Thanks, Sandra. Cheerio. Is that what they say? Oh, yeah. Cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>